I'm here with Vincent Weiser. So this is my first time meeting a patron in person. <laughs> I know I know Vincent from before, but uh, since since I met him, I think a year ago, uh, he became I think one of the largest donors to the podcast. So it's kind of crazy to, to see him in person. Uh, yeah, how, how how is it? How is Hawaii for you right now? Um. Yeah, of course. Like the conference, I think it hasn't really started, so I'm excited for for the week to dive in more alignment and safety talks. Yeah. So, do you want to like listen to people like talking about alignment, like some papers, or do you want to um, like maybe like talk to people about some projects you have? Yeah, I'm I'm most excited. I think the biggest part is probably poster sessions, but I haven't been to New York so ICML, so I'm curious to to see the formats. But I think. For just from the time, like the poster sessions and workshops, will be interesting. Um, what was like your like your motivation for, for 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 coming all the way to to Hawaii? <laughs> <laughs> Is this like uh, understanding better like like the research landscape? Like, yeah. Uh, how much learning people think? Yeah, I think like I always wanted to go to either Europe or ICML, and then uh, with COVID, like uh, it got delayed, and um, so I think it's it's just nice to have speak to all the people in person like it's harder to do so in a, a purely online context um, especially to just dive deeper into some of the research and and ask some questions to understand it better what's your like background for like AI safety like why are you interested in it or um, yeah, I I think I got interested in it even like very early on through like Ray Kurzweil and Nick Bostrom yeah. <laughs> but then then more like through yeah, and um, I think Richard No uh, Lyman pilled me then at the EAG, and and um, he did also the, like a course on alignment. Like an, I think he's still uh, this course is going on, um, and I took that in 2018. I think like a first trial run, so that got me a bit more into it. And then I just like started reading some of the blogs and um, papers, especially alignment forum and like some of his resources also he put out, but. Um, yeah, more sort of curiosity to understand what's the relevant research happening, but now there's more of it. <laughs> um, in terms of like, like investment and donations for AI safety, you're well known for like helping organize this thing in um, Montenegro, mm. um, where there are like a lot of crypto people doing doing uh, some like network state thing or yeah. like diff different kind of state. What what do you think crypto people think about alignment these days? Yeah, I think. Um, a lot of them are already, even historically, the biggest funders, like uh, Vitalik, for example, I think donated like five million to Miri uh, years ago. And um, so I think a lot of them are uh, quite interesting and willing to fund it. Uh, but I think especially now with uh, like Bankless podcast, uh, I think <laughs> more of them now are also aware of, of the issues than they were even like half a year ago. So, so I, I think even the long tail of crypto people are now interested to fund it, probably. Maybe the, the impact of the Bankless podcast is like every crypto person <laughs> like now being like a laser peel like in, the, in um, yeah, probably some are also like n not so much, but I think actually a big part of the people are, especially because like with someone like um, Vitalik being kind of the cheerleader mm -hmm. and being into it. How, how easy it is to like donate your like crypto money to like a nonprofit like without paying like a lot of taxes or nonprofit um, deduction. Like the problem is, I think often you don't get a tax receipt, especially as a <laughs> European. It's even harder to donate to US. But uh, yeah, well, then one just sends it and it's gone. Uh, but uh, I think a lot of efforts are actually, I think, making the mistake that they don't even have an option to donate crypto. So like, I think it was one of the smart things by Miri to even accept crypto, so they got crypto. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a good uh, trick for every alignment effort to accept crypto donations. <laughs> Is there like any specific like alignment effort that you're like interested in? You, you think like should have like more attention, like in research or like outreach, community building, or mm. like organizations? Of course, so your podcast. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, but, no, but I think there's the obvious ones. Like I think probably even like uh, Paul Cristiano's uh, like Arc and Arc Evals could even get more funding. Mm. Like it's probably a safe thing to put more money in. But I think they have a conflict of interest with open, open fill, so they get less funding than they could maybe. Um, I think I think there was this post recently by John Wentworth saying that like there was a some kind of like funding constraint yeah. um, in the field where we, we didn't have that like two years ago. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think in, in general there's probably like one could almost fund every project that uh, is highly rated by 
legitimate evaluators more. But I think um, it's a good question, I think, to, with the concrete stuff. I think the key is to expand to the long tail of, of good stuff, like to get more smart people into it. And then, of course, like from zero much to all of these uh, smaller efforts that um, just grow the field of, of talent and researchers. What do you mean by long tail of good stuff, like stuff that could like scale towards uh, very like impactful projects in yeah. the long term? Yeah, I think the smaller projects that um, have maybe less funding uh, or maybe even that are seeking less funding, like if a project only needs 5,000 or 50,000, I think some of the big funders don't uh, spend the time on, on smaller grants. So I think, for example, like the long term future fund from like EA funds, I think funded pretty good stuff. Also, even like small university workshops and things like this. Um, so I think there needs to be probably more mechanisms to fund a lot um, of the efforts going on, not just like the two or three good, really big projects that could absorb a lot of funding, but also smaller projects. Um, although I think it's, like, it's harder to scale because then you still need the time to evaluate if it's actually good or making it worse. Probably at some point also, like if there is then more and more funding, some people that are not as good are also looking for funding. <laughs> so. Maybe that's one of the bottlenecks is like having enough people to like evaluate those those like grant proposal and like I feel like right now all the money comes from like open appeal and there's like so many uh, grant makers but like there's not like infinite amount of people who can like evaluate yeah. like how impactful a project will be like in, 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 in this space. Yeah, um, yeah. And I think in general the what I sometimes have the sense is like even though they are probably one of the best funders out of the space, it's good to have diversity of funding sources because they will probably mainly fund one flavor of alignment work and research, and even from the background of researchers, right? I think they are funding, for example, mainly also US efforts, uh, if I'm not wrong, but like, I think there's also probably good efforts in like Asia or something, or like in Europe that they could fund, but are like, have less of a network in, in those communities. I feel like some people have been trying to do like alignment conferences in Tokyo or like yeah. other other continents, and yeah, I guess like it's very like U.S. centric or like London uh, centric. Uh, I, I think that you were mentioning something about like impact markets or like um, how do you like get retroactive funding when you like donate right now yeah. and put the money somewhere, and yeah. in two two years when we see the impact, then the money could like come back retroactively to the people. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's one mechanism that, that could be interesting. It's like, uh, I think there was also a discussion and, and there are some alignment prizes, like alignment awards uh, for, um, for example, inverse skating prize and other things like this, which I think makes sense. It's like a bit like paying for the things that work, uh, where you have certainty that they actually uh, made the things better and not worse. Because I think some of the funders, like some of the bigger funders also that I talked to, uh, said that they were not sure even on some of the stuff that they spent 50 million on if it was actually good or bad. Oh um, no. um, <laughs> 50 million. Yeah, like some, like j just like also of the investments into AI labs. Like some of the people don't, still don't know if it was like good or bad for safety. So I think that's something um, where some people probably have the sense that it's easier to evaluate after it happened if it actually was good for alignment or bad. <laughs> or no, if it made progress on it, right? I think a lot of stuff probably also won't make progress. But uh, even directionally, um, you might not, like I think it doesn't work if you only pay the stuff that solved alignment because maybe no one will solve it. But even if you made <laughs> progress on it, I think uh, that also should get probably retroactively rewarded. I feel like the only way to like know if something is like working is like if other researchers like in the community like think it's good. Yeah. And even then we're like not sure if it's going to work, right? So it's kind yeah. of like, it's not like a startup where you like see the profit go going in and like the product market fit is like, you need to, it's like a, you're judged by the researchers and they're like, t they're like time constrained yeah. and they can, they're like maybe like 50 or 100 max right now, they can yeah. like judge those projects. Yeah, and I, I think I've seen this in other fields work, like where even with papers, one could do something like you give every paper that like is highly rated as like impactful for the field, like a small grant, like every year. So the top 10 alignment papers and research efforts every year get like 50K each or something. And I think that like should be done probably and, and hasn't been done yet <laughs> as well. So I think there's a lot of almost like low hanging fruit to reward the good research, especially happening in the academia because I think it's probably still uh, way lower compensated to do uh, 
academic work on alignment, which is probably will be a majority of the work and not just at the big labs. I feel like yeah, one one way of doing a lot of impact without too much like evaluation would be like funding people who like want to do alignment work like at ac academic labs. Yeah, and you you feel like you get this amount of money and you can transition sa um, safely to like <laughs> doing alignment work. But then it's like hard to see like how much actual alignment work will be done or yeah. So did you mean basically that also people to incentivize people getting out of alignment, uh, AGI labs to do independent work almost like um, Paul Cushano, for example uh, did or more like academic academic labs like imagine like you're at Stanford MIT or yeah. um, like some Chinese yeah. lab and you're like if if you get this amount you can like hire mm. some PhDs and stuff yeah. and and don't be like dependent on the you know the the, 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 the university like giving you funding yeah ah yes so almost like independent funding within your academic work. I think like that's uh, one it's of the main areas I'm also involved in is more like funding research in universities in like a uh, more biomedical science. And I think to your point, like it's very easy for like a researcher to, uh, if they have independent funding, but like otherwise they have to fight for the funding from the state or the university. So I think um, that's quite useful. Like to, if a researcher can bring their own funding into their academic context, um, yeah, I'm actually not sure how it works for like most of the academic researchers out there that are working on alignment. Like, if their funding sources also coming from the university itself or from the state a lot, or if they mainly get independent funding. I'm not sure if it, like if you know like for the David Krugers and, and those people, if they get like a lot of donors or if they mainly get funded by the university and by the state, probably. <laughs> Even if I knew, I think it's like not great to, to talk yeah. about it publicly <laughs> on a YouTube video. Um, did you have like any uh, last message for the uh, the YouTube audience or uh, audio audience? I think one in general is probably almost like and someone said it nicely. It's like uh, especially on on sh uh, for people with short timelines. So like one ca could probably do more. Like most people, I think, are doing fairly little even that are in the field. Like they they could donate more. They could uh, like make more stuff happen than than a lot of people are. So it's like for people to get more active into making stuff happen. Is there, there's some like agency overhang? Or exactly. Like, do, do actual stuff? Yeah, I think that like very few people like really act on like their beliefs or their intuitions, especially in alignment. Like I think there are probably a lot of people with the necessary resources to fund um, impactful research, but they don't spend the time on actually doing it. Because uh, you're saying like if you have like short timelines, then you probably like want to like spend right now in the next, I don't know, like three yeah. or five years. And, yeah, and probably. maybe those people think there's like 20 years. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think a lot of people also um, almost like, I think there's this phenomenon where people think someone else will do it. It's like, and, and I think that's usually probably wrong, especially for the smaller projects that uh, they actually won't get funding otherwise. <laughs> So yeah, you're saying that like those people have a model where like some other people will do it and they only fund the very good ones and they like keep their money for like later when yeah. at crunch time or something they won't have billions of dollars to like fund real good projects. Yeah, yeah, and I think in general like there could be probably more people getting active in supporting good projects. Um, like my sense is that a lot of them have very few supporters. Um, but I, I, I hope I'm wrong and, and uh, maybe we can change it. But I think. Right now, my sense is that most good alignment projects don't even get beyond like 20 donors or something. And I thought of like giving or don donating money. Like, if, if some people are watching this mm -hmm. and and they they want to do something, like what was like a low hanging fruit in like being a nation in the world and like yeah, helping I think out? One is probably spreading the word. I think another one is even doing this like uh, AGI alignment course. I think um, is one and just like it learning about it and. And then I think even for people to start or anything, I think like that's what I think is, even though I'm, I'm not fully bought into it, but like uh, what I respect w about EA is people uh, developing a habit of giving, even with small amounts, more like to, to stay honest and, and to uh, develop also like almost like an investor. If one starts investing early, one will become a better investor than if one like delays it and starts with like at the end of one's life or something. And I think it's the same for donating. It's like it's good to start early, even with small amounts. And I think a lot of people also don't donate like 500 bucks or something, because they think it's like not impactful, but I think like, if everyone would do it, then I think we, a lot of stuff would be funded. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so you, you would advise like giving like 
small mm. amounts at the beginning just to get used to it and then when you like have a better sense of like how it feels to donate or like what, exactly like, i think what, like, what it means i think it's similar for investing you wouldn't start investing with one million dollars and you wouldn't want to start donating with one million dollars and mo most people also realistically will never get there mm -hmm. um, so i think it's better to to start small to to even like develop an intuition for what's worth funding because i think in that sense like one might f with like 50k solve the solution to like core problems while others spend 50 million on making it worse. So it's like, <laughs> like the, the initial funders of Anthropic or DeepMind might have made it worse of OpenAI. And then if you solve like uh, a relevant problem that otherwise would have gotten quite severe, then I think the impact is asymmetrically higher, even though it was like a tiny amount of money. <laughs> yeah, I guess, I guess some, some counter argument would be like, it's very hard to like judge the impact of the start of the project. Yeah. Um, like in 2016, it's like pretty hard to see like if OpenAI is going to like be like fully like safety focused or yeah. maybe like have other like for profit interests. Yeah. And and it's like the only place where you can actually put 50 million dollars, right? Yeah. I don't know if it's a 50 or any amount, but yeah, it's like hard to put like 50 millions in like a less wrong <laughs> post about alignment. Um, but yeah, I was curious about the thing what you said about like short timelines. Do you do do you act as if you you had like less than 10 years or because you, like, you also work in longevity so maybe you think you have more than 10 years <laughs> no I, I think at the end like i'm f very high uncertainty it's like i think it could be almost anything and and like i hope definitely that like uh, the people with very short timelines like the more like the miri crowd is wrong obviously so there's like some confirmation bias that, that like um yeah. i don't want to buy their arguments basically but i think at the end of the day like i don't think it's like I'm not as doomer as them and I'm not like super uh, as optimistic as, as some of the people. I'm definitely not young, like, Jan Le Kuhn level of optimistic. But um, I think like everything is kind of possible and, and ultimately I don't see many other existential risks uh, to a similar extent on the horizon. So I, I do think it's probably the most impactful thing to so, advance. So, so when you wake up in the morning, you're like pretty optimistic uh, over, overall, less less pessimistic than a lot of people, and and you you think this is kind of like a huge problem, the main problem to work on, and so you you kind of like want to min like diminish the risk. Yeah, yeah, I think even like a five percent or fifteen percent uh, like P doom in the next twenty years is pretty high, but like mm -hmm. for other people it's low, for other people it's very high. Uh, so I think it, it could be anything. Um, so I don't have very high certainty on any. Like well, although I'm, I probably fall more in the camp of like a poor. Cristiano's predictions than like uh, Miri. Mm -hmm. I think they're a bit more reasonable and like grounded in reality. Yeah, I don't want to make comments on like who is reasonable <laughs> or not, but uh, yeah, it was uh, was great having you. Uh, if you're if you're listening to Vincent, um, go go do stuff. Be an agent in the real world. Donate <laughs> money. Uh, yeah, see you in the next bit. <laughs>